Here we're going to use a few techniques to dynamically see what our top 10 performers are. So this is a perfect uh, piece of analysis, say if you wanted to analyze your customers or your products or your or your regions, something of that nature. But you actually only want to you want to isolate, say, the top 10 or the top five. So you can use these techniques to actually achieve that or to actually do this type, type of analysis. There's a couple of steps to get there, but combined, really powerful technique. I will also say that there's probably a couple, maybe a few ways to do similar type of analysis. And this is just the one way that I have done it here. But what I want to do is I want to actually be able to see who are my top 10 customers, but I want to dynamically see for any product. So I want to be able to select through products, which I'm going to have in a donut chart. And then I'm going to, and then I want to be able to see well, who are my top 10 customers dynamically for each selection of my product. Okay, cool. So uh, first of all, we've got to work out profits. So here we just need to do some, uh, do write some additional, uh, some small additional logic here. So I'm going to go total cost and find my total cost, which is just some X of the sales table. And in this case, we're going to go quantity times the total unit price or total unit cost. And then from there, I can go total profits, just create a new measure and I'm going to go total profits and go total sales minus total costs. Okay, so now we've got our total profits like so. So this is for everything. So, and this is throughout time as well. You got to remember what filters are on, what time filters are on. This is an, that's another actual set of filtering that you could do on this data as well. But in this case, we're not going to put any additional filters on time. We're just going to look at our total customers, uh, their profits. So here we have every customer, right? We have every single customer and, and their profit. And we could, we could turn this into a visualization, right? We could see every single customer like so. And obviously we can isolate the top 10 there. Um, but what, what if we want to create a visualization with just the top 10? just the top 10. Well, the first thing we want to do is we actually want to use uh, the function rank X to actually find the rank of each customer and to be able to find it in a dynamic way. So if we did put a filter on that, it would automatically uh, say who was the top 10 with that additional piece of context, say if it was a uh, product, uh, in this case, product one or product, product two, which we'll see in a second. So first of all, we're going to use rank X and I'm going to, I'm going to call this uh, top, I'm going to call this customer customer rank in this case. And to use rank X, you just uh, find the rank with, with an X on the end. And you first of all got to remember, you've got to put all in there. This is a little trick. Always remember to put all in rank because if you don't put it in, it's going to rank everything to one. So we've got to make sure we, we uh, remove all filters on the customer table. And we want to rank by total profits in this case. And don't need a value. And in this case, we're going to go descending. So I'm going to close that off. And then I'm going to drag that into the table. And you'll see here that we now have the rank. And it goes all the way down to 50. So you know we've got 50 clients in this case. Now, just to show you, if you don't put that all in there, it's a little trick. If you just put customer in there, everything will evaluate to one because it's saying every uh, in this in this context the table uh, is filtered on midline so there really is only one table uh, one customer and that's the same for every single uh, row here and that's why you get one 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 so you got to put all around the customer or around the uh, the dimension that we are uh, or lookup table that we are um, we are analyzing but now we've got the top we've got the, the rank now we need to isolate now we need to return a table which only has the profits of the top 10. so the way we do that is we want to go uh, create a new measure and we want to go top 10 customer profits And in this case, what we need to do is we need to write a bit of uh, logic with an if. So if we want to go, um, if we go customer rank is less than or equal to 10. So if customer rank is less than or equal to 10, equal to total profits, if not equal blank, because what blank does is it will basically remove that result. And so if we push into here 
and we create another table. So I'm just going to copy and paste this table here. I'm going to get rid of those two measures and I'm going to put it in top 10 customer profits. You'll see that we now have a table which only shows the top 10. But we have a small problem. The total, the total is still saying the total here which is incorrect and we need, to, we need to fix this because what could happen is if you place this into a card, you're, going, you're, getting, you're actually not getting the top 10 customer profits, you're actually getting all profits from all customers. So we need to be able to fix that piece of information. Now we can do that this way with a, with, uh, by using top end inside a calculate statement. So we have to add some, a bit of additional logic here. So first of all, we wanna go if is filtered, customer name so if the customer name is filtered which is which it is in this case we want to return the top 10 uh, the profits of only the top 10 but if it is not filtered then we need to do something else and this is what you can place in there this is what you need to place in there so calculate total profits and then we use top end and what top end is going to do is it's going to return a table of a virtual table of only these top 10 and then it's going to sum those up so then we're going to write some um, so we're going to write what value it is so top 10 and then we've got to write a table in this case what we have to do is we actually have to put values customer names in there so that it actually only is uh, it recognizes just these customers as the table and then we're going to go total profits now if we close this off you will see now that this will change. This will change and this will change and it will only be for those top 10, like so. And so now we have um, not only a dynamic table, but we actually have a dynamic total as well for top 10 customer profits, which is cool. So we can have it in a card. So now we can turn this into a visualization and I'm just gonna turn this into a stacked bar chart and make sure we sort it correctly. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put some data labels on here because I think that's going to be uh, that's going to bring some insight for us. And you'll see there that this is not formatted correctly, so that's something that you've got to do correctly every time. And then remember at the start I said, well, I actually want to be able to I want this to be dynamic. I want to be able to select a product and see who the top ten customers are. So all we have to do, all we have to do here is grab the product name. So we've got a product name dimension. So I'm just going to drag it into a tab table to start off with. And then I'm going to drag my total profits. And so now I can create a visualization out of this and I can filter it, make it a little bit larger, but check this out. Now we've got this dynamic calculation our measure actually will adjust for any selection we make. And we can check this out by this, we, I've, kept this I've kept this table here so we can actually see all the customer results. But if I go product one, you'll see it all change. So you see how that changes? Actually, what we need to do is we wanna change the interactions here. So I'm gonna go edit interactions. So this actually filters properly. So if I go product one, you'll see that this changes for the top 10 customers of product one and product seven and product 11. So we can actually multi-select as well. Seriously cool stuff, right? And it's only a table of your top 10 in this case. There's so many different ways you can swing this, but I just wanted to show you the technique and you could do this in so, and you, you could do this over not only customers, but over a whole range of different dimensions. Uh, and you can use, uh, you can, you know, you can create this dynamic, um, this dynamic filtering effect um, based on, you know, based on that rank. Pretty cool stuff, right? Okay, good luck with it. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.